How much money is now on the table? Yeah, five million dollars. Five million dollars, just on this table. What if I told you that some of the world's most valuable diamonds weren't found by corporations or massive mining machines, but by ordinary people, just like you, wandering through riverbanks, breaking open strange rocks, or simply kneeling down at the right moment in the right patch of dirt? That little sparkle you saw in the gravel, that faint glint by the stream bed, it could have been your lucky strike, because nature doesn't care who you are. It only hides its treasures for those who know where and how to look. This is no ordinary guide. This is a treasure map written by Earth itself, a language of pressure, fire, and time, etched into stone and soil, waiting to be read by the persistent and the curious. Diamonds aren't born in beauty. They are born in violence. Deep beneath the Earth's crust, under crushing heat and unimaginable pressure, nearly 100 miles down. Down there, carbon atoms are squeezed into the hardest structure nature can create. But diamonds can't stay hidden forever. They are hurled upward in violent explosions, racing toward the surface in molten rock that cools into long-forgotten formations, kimberlite pipes. Some of these break the surface, most erode over time, and a few leave behind clues. And here's the lie the world told us, that diamonds are out of reach, that only companies with bulldozers and billion-dollar budgets can find them, that you need permission, permits, and privilege to even try. But the truth? Diamonds have been found by farmers, hikers, teachers, and children. In fact, many of the biggest discoveries began with a simple walk in the woods or a stumble on a stream bank. Because nature doesn't just hide diamonds, it leaves a trail for these who pay attention. So, where do we begin? Diamonds have been found in over 35 countries around the world. Brazil, Canada, Australia, India, South Africa, Russia. But the secret isn't in a country, it's in the conditions, the clues, the fingerprints nature leaves behind. In the U.S., here's for example, Arkansas is famous for the Crater of Diamonds State Park, where thousands of diamonds have been unearthed by the public. But Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and parts of the Appalachians have all yielded diamonds, some hidden in ancient volcanic debris, others in river gravels. The real secret is in what lies beneath the soil, and the rocks that point to hidden treasure. Because here's the first real tip. Diamonds almost always travel in groups, not with other diamonds, but with bodyguards. These bodyguards are called indicator minerals. Think of them as Earth's breadcrumbs. If you spot them, you're close to something worth your time. Pyrope garnet, deep red, dense and heavy. Chromite, metallic black, with a greasy luster. Ilmenite, dark, iron-rich, and often magnetic. Diopside, green, glassy, and often overlooked. These minerals are found in the same kimberlite that carries diamonds from the depths. And when erosion tears those pipes apart, these indicators scatter across the landscape. So if you're panning a stream and come across these minerals, don't walk away. That's not random. That's a whisper. Nature speaks in signs, but those signs aren't just in minerals. They're in the very shape of the land, the hills, the soil, the texture of gravel beneath your boots. You see, the earth doesn't scream. It whispers. And the land, if you know how to read it, tells a story. Rivers that have carried sediment for thousands of years may hold placer diamonds trapped in bends or gravel bars. Unusual patches of blue or greenish soil may indicate a weathered kimberlite pipe. Ridges, depressions, or odd mounds that don't match the terrain, 
They might be the crumbled remnants of ancient volcanic tubes. Even the rocks beneath your feet hold secrets. Peridotite, Eclogite, Lamproat, strange names but unforgettable signs. Because these rocks are born from deep within the mantle, and diamonds are often born with them. This isn't just a hike, it's a hunt. You're not just walking, you're decoding an ancient puzzle, one mineral at a time. And it's not all theory. Real people have done it. In 1924, a farmer plowing his field in Murfreesboro, Arkansas, saw glitter in the dirt. He picked up a stone, and it turned out to be a diamond. That discovery would later lead to one of the only public diamond mines in the world, Crater of Diamonds State Park. Thousands of diamonds have been found there, some over 40 carats in size, not by experts, by campers, tourists, treasure hunters with backpacks and hope. In 1972, a 14-year-old girl on a family vacation found a massive brown diamond just by sifting through the soil. She wasn't rich. She wasn't trained. She was just paying attention. In Canada, a school teacher once submitted a strange rock sample to a lab. That rock led to the discovery of the Ecadie Mine, Canada's first major diamond deposit, and one of the richest ever found. These aren't fairy tales. They're field reports. And they all began the same way, with someone curious enough to stop and look twice. Now let me tell you something that no textbook will. You don't need a permit to see what others don't. You need patience. Because diamonds aren't loud. They don't shout from mountaintops. They wait. Quietly. Silently. Deep in the earth or scattered in sand. You don't need an expensive lab to find one. You need a magnet, a loop, maybe a shovel, and the willingness to fail. You'll spend hours scanning gravel with nothing to show. You'll flip over stones, test heaviness, and squint into shadows. But then one day, maybe after hours in silence, you'll see it. Not a flash, not a scream, but a whisper of light, a shape too perfect, a hardness unmatched. That is the moment you find it. That is the moment when the earth finally answers back. So now you know the truth. Diamonds don't belong to the rich. They belong to the persistent, to the ones who read the land, who learn its voice, who follow the clues nature leaves behind like a hidden trail in the woods. But this is just the beginning. Because in the next part of our journey, we'll explore the tools, the techniques, the exact steps to take when you find your first indicator mineral. How to tell a real diamond from a fake, how to map your own diamond trail, and the 10 biggest mistakes that cost people real treasure. The land is waiting. The clues are already there. All that's missing is you. Are you ready? So the next time you walk along a quiet riverbed or dig beneath the whispering trees of an ancient forest, remember, beneath your very feet, Time has hidden treasures forged in fire and pressure. Not everyone will find them. Not everyone will even try. But you, you now hold the map, the wisdom, the fire. And maybe, just maybe, the next legendary diamond the world will speak of is waiting for you to uncover it. This is not just a hunt. It's a calling. And the earth is ready to answer.